when God wants to bless you, he doesn't give you money. Hear me. When God wants to bless you, he doesn't give you a house. No. When God wants to bless you, he doesn't give you a shop. He doesn't give you a job. He gives you what money cannot buy. I always use examples. Look at this. I think I've used that example here. My dear, please come. Come stand here. This is my phone. Hold it, please. This is a product. Is that true? Just lift it up so they see it. Assuming this is 1,000 Naira. If this lady wants to buy this phone, what do I give her? So this is the capital that buys this. Is that true? Now, what if this is what she wants? What is the capital that buys this one? If it's true that this is what buys this, then what is it that buys this? The name of the capital that buys this is called true riches. That's what God gives men. He doesn't give men money. This, this is man-made. Unfortunately, this is what people labor for. Listen carefully. Is the reason why people are about to die of heart attack now. Is the reason why people leave God. God is saying, come let me give you something that will make both the rich and poor need you. And they say, oh God, no, no, just connect me to one uncle somewhere. And God is saying, what are you saying? When you go to your uncle, you have to sit at his thumbs. But when he calls because something you have, you see if I told you that as you are sitting down now you are becoming wealthy you won't believe it because what you are thinking about is if I say let's share one one thousand you say ah what kind of a church is this I'm coming back next week but you don't know that God blesses men by giving them true riches you are the mighty God. You are the glorious God. You are the mighty God. You are the glorious God. There are many arrogant Nigerians who will never pay attention to the word because they think it's a distraction. We have been indoctrinated that church is just an avenue for men of God to raise money. And so every time we come, we just look at it and, ah, okay, this one that is coming, now how much am I giving? No, sir. No, sir. God draws people. He calls a solemn assembly to lift your life, to give you something that money cannot buy. If all you have can be bought with money, you don't have much. Let me say it again. If all you have can be bought with money, then you don't have much. But there is something he can put in your destiny. The things that matter are things that money cannot buy. So it will make both the rich and the poor to listen to you. Don't you know that what you are looking for is only poor people that will come to you. Well, the people don't need some of these things. But there is something that can come from heaven. It can be bought in any market. You don't see a fake version of it. That God can put something in your life. And you can run back home and say, Mama, I found a key. She said, you mean you got a job? He said, no. If it was a job, I wouldn't dance this much. I found something. What is that something? I found a key. A key that will make a generation hear you. I found a key. A key that will make both the rich and poor to sit and listen. I found a key. A key that vetoes your background. Vetoes whatever territory. What is that key? I found it. That key is a man. It's not a thing. It's not an object you turn left and right. I found a key. Have you found it? There are people who have found this thing. I found your word. I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. When I found this thing, I rejoiced. I knew my life, it was over. Some of us who didn't have the privilege of coming from good backgrounds. What is your bailout system in this wicked world? Where someone can look at you and say, I know your father. You are as poor and stupid.
it as your father but when he puts it upon you Jesus please sit down and listen to what I'm teaching you your pastor put this meeting because he loves you the thing we are chasing for will never give us the result we want find out the various reasons why you are distracted from spiritual things number one Naira and Kobo you don't know that this money itself is a living thing there is a reason why it runs away from you money is not an object I was teaching yesterday pastor the Bible says in Ecclesiastes I think I'm seven or so it says money is a defense wisdom too is a defense that means money is a weapon. Is that true? I'm not talking about money. I'm just using it. And the Bible says our weapons are not carnal. So it is a weapon. God knows you need the money as a weapon. But he says it is not carnal. Not man-made. This was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because he says it's man-made. Pastor the various reasons why people leave God. It's amazing. Uh, the average believer has indoctrinated himself into believing that God is an option for losers. When you try useful things in your life and they don't work, just console yourself because you are surely on your way to heaven. Poverty will send you to, you know, they have this idea. So they say, just seek God. Oh. And you see people drag themselves like they're going to a graveyard all in the name of God. Whoever taught you that men seek God and lose? Whoever taught you that just because you are seeking God and you don't have a rent, and just because you are seeking God and one or two things are not in place, don't let a carnal generation make God look like a cheap commodity. God is priceless. Find out those who sought him and how they changed their generation. You are looking for a job. God wants to make you a voice. You are looking for a little opportunity to build a small duplex. Whereas God wants to make your name a key to men's destinies. That someone can come and say, well, I graduated with third class. But um, I, I, I just had to greet my uncle before coming here. Say, who is your uncle? Say, Pastor Sholai. Say, Pastor Sholai is your uncle. Come, you will be my secretary. Sorry, sir. I said I studied. It's not about what you studied. If Pastor Shola listens to you, then I know that you can come here. A man can become a key. God told me this years ago. Listen. He said, son, if you will make men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I think you've heard my story. I'm sorry I'm starting this way. You can see that. Just let me do what I'm doing. Eh? I came to bless you. Pastor, years ago, I went to Ibadan. There's a, there's a hotel called, uh, what's the name now? Uphill. Premier Hotel. I remember going there years ago. It was night. And I went there. I knew that, I mean, nobody, I mean, if they, if, how they did even throw me out of that place is, is even a miracle. I went there. There was no place to sleep. There was no money. There was nothing. I saw wealthy people come in. They just parked. They went and I looked. I said, oh dear. I saw small children of rich people just jump around and touch anything. They are not afraid whether it breaks or not. And I was just watching. How unfair life can be. It was night there. I had to come down and look for a church that was having a vigil. Not because I wanted to attend a vigil. Are we together? And I stood in front of that hotel. I said, one day, God will bring me here with honor. I may not have what it takes in terms of business prowess or whatever achievement, but I have someone who, a real Godfather. A few years later, I would be ushered to that same place. And at the highest, um, what they call it, the suit there, I went with this, my gentleman, and I mean, they were swimming, they were jumping, playing table tennis, and I was looking at them from my window. I said, God, you told me this. You told me, you told me that if I walked with you, no man would laugh at me for long. 
you told me there is something God can give you that money cannot buy. So when he calls you and says, my daughter, seek me, my son, seek me, forget about the hunger that happens for 30 days. Because whether you are fasting or not, many of us, the hunger is still there. So it's better for it to be there for 30 days and then live for the rest of your life. Are we together? Many of us have come from backgrounds where honestly speaking, except something supernatural happens, there is no possibility of rising to any dimension. And God calls you. He calls you. And men interpret his calling as an inconvenience. Lord, why are you distracting me? Are you not satisfied with the five minutes I gave you? If you want, I can bribe you with another five minutes before I sleep. Mumble some tongues and open my Bible and read one verse. It should be enough for you. And God says, I want to help you. I thought I saw you crying and I came to you now. And he said, Lord, I need money. This is what I need. If it's not money you are knocking my door with, go back. I need raw money straight. And God is saying, if I bless you with money alone, I still cheated you. But someone can kneel down and say, Lord, I may not have much now. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I may not come from a great family like Gideon. But Lord, I heard that when you find men, you make wonders out of them. I'm available. I may not be much. I may not have all the parameters that men use to measure success. And God says, just trust me. Ah, oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever trust you. I will seek you in the morning and I have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days one more time step by step for step by step you lead me and I I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. 